welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I'm Maggie Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to rise up, grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I interview leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, authors, exceptional people who can and will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week and make sure you subscribe to the podcast to get the episodes as soon as they are released. Today's show, I am delighted to speak with uh, Erika Lippi. Erika, you are a Los Angeles native, a life and wellness coach, a podcast host, and the creator of Passion Love Pursuit, an intentional movement and mindfulness pursuit that encourages you to become your best self. Your mission is to help ambitious women become the women they are meant to be, to attract the dream life they are meant to have by mastering their mind, body and actions. Erika, welcome. I'm uh, overjoyed to have you to, today. Thank you so much. I deeply appreciate you having me on. This has been some time in the works. I know we've connected on so many different platforms, I guess you could say, and different challenges, and it's nice to meet face to face finally <laughs> catch up yeah i think it was uh, it was uh, quite a few months when we first uh, communicated uh, with each other um, yeah erica i want to start with something uh, that i wanted uh, maybe a clarification so you say that you are and i will quote you on this just a woman looking to touch lives create change and help others live their lives more passionately and purposefully so i want to know in in your journey towards this realization, towards becoming this person, is there any particular milestone or key defining moment that uh, stands out uh, for you? You know, there's several. I think we all have the, <laughs> these moments in time that kind of wake us up to a new reality. So I've actually been, let's see, so I've been self-employed for about 17 years doing it what I called at the time a job uh, that I kind of fell into and it's a professional fit model. So basically I fit clothing, it's uh, fit exactly to my body and then mass produce for every size. So I started this 17 years ago. It was gonna be something just for money, right? And I was actually only gonna do it for a year, end up being, as I said, 17 years later. <laughs> But for about eight years, I would say, I've been trying to figure out what is it that I'm meant to do? I studied fashion design. That's kind of how I fell into the fit modeling. But I really, nav I, I was navigating my life and trying to figure out like, what am I so passionate about? And I tried, I dabbled in things, but nothing stuck. And come to find out, you know, I, again, I'm in this job that makes the money, which gives me the ability to try other things per se. But I, for so long, didn't know what I was passionate about and really what was my purpose I was meant to serve in. And it's something that just fueled inside of me, like burning to get that answer. So honestly, how it was all discovered was through my own personal development. My own struggles really gave me the realization of really where I'm meant to serve. And actually, I only uncovered it a couple years ago, <laughs> uh, like two and a half, three years ago, I finally discovered and it really came. Uh, and this is kind of how my podcast was birthed, uh, Passion Love Pursuit podcast, as you know about, was I was going through my own personal development journey. I had this breaking moment, if you want to say that kind of woke me up, mm -hmm. that I realized I kept getting the same result. I would change little things and I would learn all these lessons and I would do a little tweak, but really ultimately I, I wasn't really changing myself. I was just shifting, mm -hmm. shifting in little mm -hmm. ways. Yes. And so I realized I kept on getting the same lesson over and over on this one one level, two on one level, three on one level. And then finally it hit me one day. And what I struggled so much in, uh, besides trying to find my passion and purpose, what I struggled so much in was relationships. Mm -hmm. I really seeked love and I've had multiple long-term relationships, um, 13 to 23, a 10 year relationship that significantly impacted me. I had a five year relationship. And then after that, I was just meeting the wrong men. But honestly, when it came down to it, my breaking moment was realizing I am the common denominator in this mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. If if I don't take a hard look at myself and realize what needs to change, nothing will change. Mm -hmm. So 
that's, that kind of was my breaking moment where I started this hardcore personal development journey. And in this journey, I started listening to a lot of podcasts, started listening, like surrounding myself with things that would help me grow. Cause I've always believed if you're not growing, you're dying. And I, I seek growth in my life. And so just to answer your question really <laughs> is that my breaking moment was doing the work myself. But then in that, I learned a lot that really it comes down to taking ownership of our life and full responsibility. And that to me was like the, the biggest pivotal moment of my life when I'm like, this is my responsibility. My life is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if I don't take ownership and I don't take control and get into the driver's seat and start steering it the right direction and close the gap between where I'm at and where I want to go, then, then I will stay in this freaking hamster wheel mm -hmm. <laughs> of trying to figure it all out and just hitting the same wall. So that's kind of, I hope that answers your question of kind of these pivotal moments of my life that I came to realize that something needs to change. <laughs> it doesn't, I can relate because I have something similar in terms of this gap that you mentioned, that the realization that the life, my life was not where... I wanted it uh, to be so you said so but by your own struggles you came to that uh, uh, turning point uh, was there something in particular that triggered that because you said the word moment was it indeed a moment or was it yes. gradual <laughs> you know well actually I would say it was something that was building up like I said I, I really believe life is t is always teaching us something if we look for the answers uh, I really believe it's it's like Life is this journey that is just a, is a series of lessons. We're meant to learn to get us to our highest self, our best self. Uh, and it's not an end result. It's, it's just a journey that continues. So it was kind of like I kept on getting the same lesson. And, and as I mentioned, it happened to be in relationships. Mm -hmm. But really when it came down to it, it wasn't about the relationships with others and that love I seeked. It was more like, the lesson I need to learn is to love myself. And that was the game changing moment for me is like, if I seek this love for another, how could I receive this if I'm not giving it to myself, if I'm not showing up in my worth, if I'm not valuing myself, respecting myself, most importantly, how could I, how could I get that in the return? So the pivotal moment when I finally, you know, I've, I've met, you know, like I said, I had, substantial relationships that were with quality men and I met other quality men and dated and whatnot. But the, the pivotal moment moment was when I found somebody that I thought like, Oh, this maybe is the one, you know, what I hoped for. And I liked him. And I, I, I went through a series of hard moments at the time. It's kind of like when it rains, it pours. So that was kind of the moment for me. But what happened is again, I felt I pushed somebody away that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And I was really upset with myself. Like something is, why is this happening again? Like, I don't want to keep repeating the same, same thing over and over and making little changes, but nothing really truly mm -hmm. changes. So the moment was that kind of ending per se. And I, I did two really powerful things. I said yes to working with my life coach again. This wasn't the first time. It was mm -hmm. actually the third time, but this time I didn't have the means at the time, but I'm like, if I don't say yes to this, then if nothing changes, nothing will change. So I, I had to be very intentional and say, yes, I must do this. It's not a should, it's a must. And I, I will figure out the means, which I always can. I should kind of remind myself that I always can figure it out. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think we all need to remind ourselves, like, no matter <laughs> what, we can find a way. If we're determined enough, we will find a way. We're of resourceful. Course. Us humans are so resilient. So, so I was very, so I said yes to working with my life coach again. I found the means. Um, and then also the second most important step was being very intentional in the pursuit of becoming my best self. Mm -hmm. for having this end, re not end result. I hate to say that because I, like I said, I think it's a journey, but achieving something to actually getting closer to where I want to go. And so my, why I say intentional is so important because when you do anything, you have to go fully in, you don't dabble, you don't half-ass shit. 
you won't get anywhere if you do that. I don't know if I could swear, but <laughs> when I'm passionate, <laughs> <That's> I swear. <laughs> yeah. sure, <laughs> so so I, you just have to be very committed, committed to yourself, most importantly. And I, this is one thing I shared on the Tony Robbins challenge recently, like say yes to yourself. You know, you're, if you stay committed, if you're disciplined, you're just, you're basically just standing for you. You're saying yes to that. I'm worth it. That I, that I'm worthy, that I deserve to be seen. I deserve to shine my light. I deserve to be loved. I am enough. So I think being disciplined is just disciplined and intentional is so critical to getting results. So that was what I did to, and that was my pivotal moment where Mm -hmm. I was like, enough is enough. And I threw up my hands. I'm like, something needs to change. So that was it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. And I think many people get it. There are these moments that uh, you really know that something needs to change. And even if you don't know what, it is enough to, to take you into a journey. And uh, Erika, you said earlier that uh, that phrase that uh, it's not a should, it's a must or something along that lines, which is uh, by Tony Robbins. Who you mentioned him uh, already. And I want to ask, uh, when you started your your journey, what what was the the role, shall we say, of uh, of Tony Robbins, who is, by the way, the the way through you and me met uh, as well through one of, of his events. But uh, can you tell me how has he changed yeah. you? <laughs> ah, I love TR. <laughs> I'm such a Tony Robbins fan. Me I, I'm too. like, I'm all about him, and I know obviously that's why we connected, but. Yes. What I love about him, this is what I could say, and I, I want to really um, drive this home because I think this is important. Tony Robbins, number one, is brilliant, and he's spent 44 years of his life committed to changing lives, to really helping people change their mindset and take control and ownership of their life. But what is so magnificent is it's simplistic. The simple things he says, you're like, Oh my gosh, that's a nugget. Like I need to write that down. That's so powerful. And it could be like literally five words that could change your life. Like he said, and I I highly believe this, that if you want to change your life, change your standards, raise your standards. And I think that is so pivotal. Like Mm -hmm. I think people need to look at like the results you're getting are based on your standards. Change your standards, change your life change the, change your language, change your life, like change your story, change your life. And all these things are so powerful and it's so true. I could preach it all day long. (laughs) It's so good. And, um, I just really value everything he shares, but I think raise your standards is so important because going back to relationships, I was settling for less than I deserved because number one, I thought I deserved that. And then also I wasn't stepping into my worth of what I truly deserved. Mm -hmm. So my standards were low because I thought that's what I deserved, you know, at the time it was this, it's almost like you're wired that way. Um, So that's why we had to retrain our story and look at our limitations and how we could really shift into an empowering life opposed to disempowering. And so I don't know if I answered your question, but <laughs> there's there's so many powerful nuggets taken from Tony Robbins. So he's changed my life because honestly, the simplistic things he's said have really stood out to me, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and taking those simple words, like it's a must. This is how I feel about 2021. My life right now, anything I decide is a must and anything I put my energy into is a must. It is not a should. It's not a want, it's a must. If I really want it, I have to change my mindset and really embody that belief, you know? So that's really changed my life. And the energy, my state, the state we bring is the state we receive back. Um, I think that's just so important. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. (laughs) Fantastic. And you know what you just said that... uh, Anything you decide, it's a must. I think it's a very empowering uh, statement for for anyone to to realize that deeply. Because uh, a decision, by I think by definition, a decision is is a must. When once you decide, there is no other uh, option. You've decided. So looking at it as a must uh, really moves you forward. And. Um, 
Eric, I wanted to discuss uh, something that I know that you are uh, very passionate about, and that is uh, mastering uh, your mind, your body, your life, mastery in general. And uh, I was thinking about about that earlier, that uh, you're in the right podcast to talk about mastery. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. uh, let me ask, first of all, what does mas- mastery, <clears throat> excuse me, what does mastery mean to you? Ooh, that's a good question. I love that because I don't believe mastery is some end result, but what mastery to me is, is whatever it may be, whatever you choose to master in your life, may it be your mind, your actions, your body, whatever it is. It's basically taking that vision. Again, I I think getting clarity on your vision is probably the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So having that vision and saying, you know, uh, what do I need to do to achieve that result or to get where I want to go? And mastery is doing it over and over and over again so that you feel confident enough that you've arrived per se. But mastery, mastery to me is one of those things that not many people seek to do. But I, I personally, I want to master myself. I want to be unstoppable, un, unshakable, you know, ever so powerful for myself so I could create the life I deserve and want and also create a ripple effect, you know, outside me so I can impact others. So master mastery to me is really important in your podcast, personal mastery, personal mastery. I think we are so lucky to have all these resources available for us. Like I, we just did the five day challenge for free. Mm. Yes. I, I think it's what a gift. What a gift. We are giving ourselves that gift. So to be able to take this personal development journey, it, it's a privilege. And um, I think mastery, that's just what I seek in myself mm-hmm. and in my life. And uh, I welcome you as a fellow uh, traveler in this uh, journey. And I know it's, it's not many people do it, Erika, because it's not easy. It's not. It takes exactly. consistency. It takes uh, discipline. It takes dealing with uh, the disappointments and uh, yeah it is not easy but for people who decide to pursue it it is uh, essential because it it is so fulfilling Uh, can you tell me you um, distinguish the the master in yourself in terms of um, uh, mind body and uh, actions if i'm not mistaken so i want uh, a brief uh, overview of these three areas as you know as three compartments of uh, our life that you help uh, people to to master Mm, yeah well i i've kind of broke it down into a framework so Mm -hmm. you know well first let me say that i myself think mastering your body is the best place to start and it's actually one of the programs i'm going to be launching it's going to be called mastering your body And there is a reason why I'm starting there, especially is because I I believe when you master your body, that creates ripple effect into everything in your life. Because when you feel energized, when you have vitality, when you feel, you know, that you are unstoppable, that just creates so much more energy in everything you do. So I believe starting with the body physiology is one of the best ways to change your life. And so that is something that I have. I obviously take to heart. I work out probably five days a week, but I've been working out since I was 13. I mean, it's really been a part of me. To me, it's a lifestyle. It's not a, you know, it's not like I have this goal per se. It's a part of me. It has become a part of me. So when it comes to mastering your body, I think, you know, movement is health, vitality, energy, everything. So that is number one to me when it comes to like where to begin. But as far as the framework, you know, um, we always have to, the mind and body is never separate. So you have to bring in the mind. So I like to start with when I name a framework for mastering your mind, body, and actions, it's developing clarity, radical responsibility, clearing the roadblocks, and then mastering your energy and action. So that's kind of like the start of the framework. So when we talk about uh, developing clarity, mm-hmm. I said how clarity is power, having Clarity is the most important thing. It's also self-awareness. You could kind of tie them together. So 
clarity is really having like, what do I want out of my life? What do I deserve? What, what, who do I need to be? Who do I need to become? And having that clarity, that powerful vision and that compelling why of what you want to create in your life. And you need to slap that on a wall <laughs> and, and see it, like see it, embody it. I, I think that's so important. I, I've interviewed so many people on the importance of visualization and I never really got it before and I never really stepped into it, but now I'm like, I get it. It, it's, it connects you to your why, your vision. So developing clarity is, is number one, you know, take, take five, well, no, don't take five minutes. Don't take 10 minutes. Take a day. <laughs> Go somewhere that's going to quiet your mind. Be, be in, I love nature. Be in nature and just kind of journal it. Just start saying like, what, what do I want out of my life? And getting really clear of, and, and, and write down the feelings, the smells, whatever. The more clear you are, the better it is. And then ask yourself, why do I want this? Uh, and Tony Robbins talk, talks about that compelling why. It really matters. What's my purpose for? Because you need something to drive you there. If you just have this vision, but not a big enough why. Like, for example, if somebody says, oh, I want to lose five pounds because, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up, which is right around the corner because I want to <laughs> yes. look sexy for my boyfriend or my yes. husband. That's nice, right? But what's a bigger why? Because you want to bring that, energy, that vitality, that state, and you want to, you want to feel good in your skin because what does that make you feel? That makes you feel more powerful and that makes you more passionate for everything you do. So anyways, I could go on and on about that. But, so <laughs> developing clarity is number one. Yes. And, and that self-awareness. The next one, radical responsibility. I mentioned this earlier that I think it's one of the most powerful things that will change your life is when you take ownership of your life because you are part of the equation to everything in your life. You are hundred percent responsibility for your outcome in your life. And it's a hard truth. Some people don't like to hear that, that you're responsible for your outcome in your life, but you are in the driver's seat and how um, empowering is that to be in the driver's seat of your life, that you have the capability to create what you want. And, and so I think that when it comes to responsibility, you have to ask yourself, what part did I play in this? What, what was my actions that got me here? What were my lack of actions that got me here? What were my beliefs and all that? So, and the next one is clearing the roadblocks. And this is probably one of the most important that Tony Robbins Robbins uh, talks about, and sorry, we're bringing Tony Robbins a lot into this interview, but there's a reason I, why. Somehow, we somehow really... had the feeling we would, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so clearing the roadblocks, I like to say that because we're on this journey. We're on this path, if you want to say. And we, if you're looking at a road, it's not a clear road to the end, you know, the end that we see in sight. It's so windy. It's hills up and down, up and down. We can't even see the end because number one, there isn't an end until we die. And not to sound, you know, uh, dark that we're going to die someday, but the reality is we are going to die someday. So we're going to live this life that we want to live because we choose to, we've decided, right? So we need to get rid of the roadblocks that we will endure as COVID has presented us with. We will always, the most unexpected thing, which it was definitely COVID and how long it's lasted, it will always come. Uh, problems will always arise. So we need to get rid of those roadblocks, which are our limiting beliefs, the story we tell ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'm not going to go into how to rewrite your limiting beliefs, but because there's a process, but we need to yeah. really understand what's in our way. And we have to learn how to handle those roadblocks and go over them, not mm -hmm. just like turn around and avoid them. We have to be honest and we have to learn how to build this resilience and grit to get past them. And the next one is uh, mastering your energy. So like I mentioned, our energy is everything. Energy is always a part of our un energy is our universe, right? Everything yes. around us. So mastering our energy is what do we bring to the room? What, what state are we in? And we have to really take ownership of how we're showing up mm -hmm. and really learn how to learn how to shift that as 
I've really learned how easy it is to change our state. And, and the three core ways to do that, as Tony Robbins talks about, is physiology, changing a radical change in your body. I'm a big person into working out. So I know that if I work out, I'll instantly feel better. If I go jump on my rebounder, I'm going to feel so youthful and so like playful because I'm just jumping around, get in my cold shower and I dance, you know, like that instantly <laughs> puts me in a good mood. Yes. So that's easy. And then changing our language is another way to change your state is how you, how, the words you put to things. And then the other one is, uh, what's the other one? Oh my gosh, I just went blank. So changing your language, changing I'm, your words, focus. changing your state. Oh yes, your focus. <laughs> Where your focus goes, energy flows. Yes. <laughs> if you focus on the negative, of course, things are going to be negative. That's given. So, and then the last one is, of course, mastering your action. Mm -hmm. And without action, your dreams, your vision won't come to life. So we really have to get clear on what actions do we need to take. And, and this is one thing I would love to share that, and, and this is, this is something that I'm learning even more into depth these days. Yes. Uh, Mark divine has been on my podcast. I love Mark divine. He's mm -hmm. taught me breath work. He's taught me the power of meditation, but what one of his most powerful tools, and this is especially a Navy seal tool is when you have a big goal, a audacious goal that you want to go after that could be overwhelming yeah and the way to make it less overwhelming is you break that down into little micro goals mm -hmm. and you tackle micro things daily so when it comes to taking action mastering your actions is really breaking down into micro goals that is the way you will get your big audacious goal and so that's kind of the framework I like to share with others. I mean, there's much more, but that's the basics. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you, you covered it very, very well. And you gave an overview of all the steps. And I agree with you. It's extremely important, uh, the, the clarity that you said, knowing who we are. Uh, it's so important. And uh, sometimes I wonder, uh, you know, this phrase, know thyself, has been out there for thousands of years and still here we are <laughs> all this uh, you know millennia afterwards and we're still trying to to figure that out to to know ourselves and uh, yeah. also can the... i add to that of course actually i wanted to add to that so when it comes to clarity i think the most important thing you need to do is write down what do you value what are your principles what's your um philosophy for life like yeah. that i think really a lot of people don't do and this could really trickle into relationships too, because once you start to write down, like, what do I want in a person? What do I stand for? What do I believe? What, you know, who do I need to become to be in alignment with what I desire? Mm -hmm. And that's why I talk about helping women become the women they're made to be, to attract what they desire in life, because it, it's one thing to have this vision for what you want, but you have to think of who am I being? Am I in alignment for what I want? So I think we really need to ask ourselves, most importantly, in the clarity aspect is what are my values? What are my principles? What is my philosophy for life? And that is unique to you and you alone and own that. <laughs> like take ownership of what you what you really truly value and that's how you become your authentic self is really stepping into that so i just wanted to add that little piece thank you i agree with you you see me nodding because i agree 100 percent and uh, in a way it's saying that it's a shame that these things are not really being taught to us traditionally mm -hmm. we have to go and figure them out uh, ourselves but uh, hopefully times are changing and uh, you know, these kinds of uh, conversations and the, the ease that w information goes around now, it's going to change that. Um, yes. That actually brings me, Eric, I wanted to ask you about uh, your podcast, which I know you, that you are uh, very uh, passionate about. And it's actually a fantastic podcast. I'm, I'm a fan Thank myself. You. I have, uh, you have brought Thank some, you, uh, you know, tremendous uh, people. They're very inspirational. Uh, can you tell me... Um, one thing that you have learned by mm. doing your podcast. 
So hard to pull out one thing. Well, first of all, thank you for being a listener to Passion Love Pursuit podcast. I it's my baby. I feel like when I first started it, I didn't really know number one what I was doing. And this is for everybody out there that's afraid to start something because you don't know how to do it. Just jump in. Yes. You'll figure it out along the way because let me just tell you, a lot of people don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot, you know, you'll always, the thing is, I remember when I was first recording interviews, number one, I would never do video, forget it, because I needed <laughs> to remember what I was asking people. Uh, and if I looked at somebody, they would distract me. So, <laughs> so that's how I started. And, and I actually edit all my podcasts myself. I, I do pretty much everything by myself. All and right. part of the reason why I do that is because I want to know what I'm doing. And I want to be able to answer questions if somebody asks me. And I think I've asked very popular podcasters like, hey, what program? I remember early on, what program do you use? And they, would, they didn't even know because somebody else did it. Mm -hmm. And so I like the fact that I have the knowledge of how to do it. And I did my own research and I learned it myself. But the thing is, when you want to start something, don't think you need to know everything to start because I promise you along the journey, you will learn. And you, and that's the best part is that you get to learn. You get to learn these tools because you're in it. So podcasting, as you probably know, <laughs> it's a commitment. You have to be committed. I and I, I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's funny when, or not funny. Let me reword that. So there's, I've been, I'm sure you get it too. Like, how do you start a podcast? Well, I don't know the first thing to do. And the first thing I want to tell people, don't be doing it for a hobby. Because let me just tell you, it's a very time consuming hobby and you won't last. And then you're going to feel like you just wasted your time. I mean, you might get benefits, you know, Oh, part, part of the reason why I started my podcast was because I was wanting to be on the journey with everybody else because mm -hmm. I'm in this personal development journey. It's never going to end. I'm going to always choose growth. So I was on the journey with you or am with you. And I always say, don't start it if it's going to be a hobby, you know, unless you really want to do it just for shits and giggles, go ahead by all means. But if you want to be committed to it, if you really want a good outcome, you have to stay consistent and you yeah. have to go fully in and just learn along the way. Cause you'll always get better and better. I've seen my improvement like night and day. Oh my goodness. And now I do video. So that's awesome. <laughs> so the other thing, uh, so passion, love pursuit podcast, the guests, uh, yes, I feel so privileged beyond words that I could express of the Phenomenal guests I've had. What a privilege. What an honor. I've had Nick Santostasio, which is, you know, stands on the stage with Tony Robbins, speaks to kids. He is just fire. Mm. Wow. And then I've had Siri Lindley. Siri mm -hmm. Lindley to me is one of my most favorite respected guests I've had. Uh, she's brought me to tears at the end. I, mm. I love her. I adore her. But I could almost every time when I record with a guest, I get off after and I'm like, oh, so good. And I'm just so <laughs> fired up because I've, I, I do carefully choose my guests because I want to provide value and I want to make sure I'm providing value from somebody that has something to serve another and can speak from experience. And that has, you know, that I, I love vulnerability. Vulnerability is my superpower. So I love people that share their story and that share how they arrived to where they are and mm -hmm. how they gain this expertise. But you asked me this question, what have I gained most <laughs> from my guests? So it's hard to pull out one thing, yeah. but the biggest thing, the biggest thing that people say, and I get a hundred percent guarantee that this is like a common denominator between pretty much every successful person they meditate. <laughs> hmm. They meditate. Every person I have probably interviewed, they meditate in some form. Don't, don't think you need to be like cross-legged, you know, going um and all this stuff. They meditate in some way. They connect to their, their higher self or God, universe, whatever it may be. They do some form of meditation. And this year, again, this is where I said, I must, it's not a should, it's not a want. I must meditate every day and I will not fail myself of that. I will, mm -hmm. I will gift myself every day, the power of meditation. Mm -hmm. So I started this journey and I'm starting breath work as well. 
So that was my biggest thing is I realized through all these people, the common thing they were saying is how powerful meditation is. And now it's, um, for me, it's a, a must. So, but as far as what I've gained from all the powerful speakers I've had is that we don't need this, this story that is just so tragic to impact others. We are all powerfully unique and we all have a story, a story that once was disempowering and how we've turned it around and made it the most empowering story to share with others. And how every, each and every one of us has the ability to pack, impact lives, whether it be one person, whether it be a hundred, thousands, millions, we all are capable. We just really need to take, I love using this word, ownership of our life and step into the arena. Just do it. I like to say, just jump off the freaking cliff. <laughs> you're going to land. <laughs> Let's hope not on the ground, but you're going to land. Like, I think it just really, you just have to step into the arena regardless. And, and don't be afraid to share a part of you. You don't have to just spill it all out. Some people are not comfortable being vulnerable, but the more vulnerable you are and the more you just speak your truth, the more you will connect to another human because we are all human. We don't need to be perfect. We don't need some tragic story. We just need to be human mm -hmm. and, and share it from our heart, you know, and that's it. So I think that's what I've really realized through all the amazing, ridiculous guests I've had is that I was so like, I remember when I had Nick Sento Stasio on last year, I was so nervous before. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, he's so amazing. <laughs> And honestly, I think I had a phenomenal interview. I knew who I was talking to and I wasn't, once I started the interview, I didn't feel this, you know, that I was less than, I was just like inspired by him. If anything, I, I was, I was taking it all in opposed to being, you know, feeling less than him, you know? And I think that is really important that when I started to inter more, uh, interview more people, I felt as an equal, you know? And I think that's important that don't think that just because this person is doing this or, or they have this message, they're on stages, they're impacting millions of lives. I don't even like to say this, but Tony, like Tony Robbins is the king, like on stage. I, I don't think anybody can compare to him. I mean, mm -hmm. well, they're as comparable as like Les Brown, but like, why can't you, why can't you? He's human. You're human. It's just like how much dedication, how much drive do you have to get to where you want to go? That's really what it comes down to. So. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and I'm it's telling a... myself that, by the way. <laughs> I'm not just <laughs> telling you that. I'm telling myself that. So I'm on this journey with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, of course, uh, I would say that uh, Tony Robbins is a little bit of a, an extreme example to, to, <laughs> to say that we can do it. But uh, yeah, because his amount of dedication and all these years, it's uh, yeah. probably very, very uh, unique. But there were some things you were saying earlier when you were talking about uh, your podcast that... Uh, and. I want to reiterate myself that uh, if you if you don't have your passion, try and do and find things that you won't find your passion. You know by thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It's by trying and doing things, and then you know because you feel it in your heart. You do something like it was. I remember Erica very clearly when I did my first first ever recording of a podcast, which was not this one. It was my first podcast. And I had this tremendous energy and uh, vitality then for hours. And I thought, wait a minute, this is, this, <laughs> there is something here. I, won't, I don't feel like that normally. And uh, so it's, uh, I like very much the phrase, uh, joyous exploration of, you know, activities that we can uh, do. And once you find what you are passionate about what is uh, close to your heart and dear with your, with, in your heart, you do it and you get good at it as well because you have this kind of energy that comes, this enthusiasm that comes from within you. No one has to to tell you, oh, you have to do your podcast, Erica. I'm sure you get up and do it because you are very much inspired to do so. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually I'll add to that. So I'm big on getting outside my comfort zone. And when it comes to figuring out your passions, you don't just keep doing the same thing. You actually have to get outside your comfort zone and learn and see what's what you are passionate about by doing that. I think that is one of the most amazing things you could give yourself is stepping outside your comfort zone because that's where you grow. I remember mm-hmm. when I started rock climbing. I, I love rock climbing. Mm-hmm. And that's one of those things that like, okay, I've never done this. I'll try. And it ended up being something I was super passionate about. And there's so many gifts that actually come with rock climbing, surprisingly, but it's one of those things that, you know, you you don't know what you're doing. It's so new for you, but if you try it, you'd be surprised. Like then that's how you learn what you love. And and more you do things you love, the more, you know, energy, vitality, you know, fulfillment you have in your life. You have to be doing things outside your comfort zone to learn that. So that's really important. Absolutely. It's the journey, the journey of uh, growth or the spiral. Of, yes. Uh, um, Erika, I would love to ask you some uh, quick, fire, uh, quick fire questions as well to start mm-hmm. uh, wrapping things up. So uh, first of all is what does personal development mean to you? Hmm. Well, like I, mean, I you're said, You're very big journey. at it. You, you say, you're saying earlier, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's just a journey that I think it's a privilege we get to be on the journey. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think it's a gift we're giving ourselves, And yes. when we, when we give that to ourselves, it only creates a ripple effect in the world. Cause the more we, the more our cup is full, then it can overflow onto others. And, and some people, I, I actually remember this, um, in the Tony Robbins challenge, there was this guy that commented to me and he said, my vision or my compelling why wasn't big enough because it seemed selfish. And I was like, did you not hear how I said that I want to continue my, my development because I want to serve, I want to serve from my highest self that I want to serve more. Where did selfishness come out of that? And I thought it was really interesting because like Tony Robbins says, and I I hate bringing him up all the time, but I always like to pull him out. (laughs) But he said some really valuable things and and it's nothing that we haven't heard before. When you're in an airplane, who do you put the mask on first? You put it on yourself so that you could help the next person because if you're passing out, you can't help another person. So no matter what, we always have to help ourselves first. Like I said, the the biggest lesson I learned in my life was self-love. And if I didn't love myself, how could I expect to get the love in return? So we have to help ourselves and, and helping ourselves is through personal development. Mm-hmm. I think we are so lucky today to have so many resource resources at our disposal, yes. disposal to improve ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the books on my shelf, they're pretty much all personal development because mm-hmm. it's just something I, I love. I love bettering myself. That is my absolute goal is to master myself so that I could serve so many more from this place of full, like being full and actually having control of myself so that I could actually help others achieve what they want out of life, you know? Because if I haven't got there, how could I help others, right? So that's what I think personal development is, is just this journey. And we we get to choose to be on it or not. Thank you. That's a wonderful answer. The, you said it's a gift we give to ourselves. And uh, <laughs> again, I can relate very much to what you're <laughs> saying, Erika. Um, tell, me, tell me something else. If you could uh, go back in time and meet your 18-year-old self, uh, what's mm-hmm. the one piece of advice you would give her? Okay, I'm going back to my 18-year-old self. <laughs> so like uh, the biggest thing is all you need is already within you. And don't seek things outside of yourself because what you need is, is to, is to love yourself more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, it makes me want to cry when I think of this because it's, it was my journey. Like I really, I seeked things outside myself and I wasn't connected who, to who I was. I didn't know who I was at this time. I was in this relationship 13 to 23 with somebody that was three years older. So I formed into liking the same thing he liked. I didn't know who I was, you know, and 
I had bad acne back then. You know, I just like, I wasn't, I didn't truly love myself or know my worth. So if I could just go back, I would just say, all you need is within you and the love you give to yourself will then be reflected back to you. Mm -hmm. So start there. That's what I would say. That's fantastic. Uh, let me ask you one more uh, hypothetical question. If you could wave a magic wand and change something in the world as it is today, what would you change? Mm. Oh. Easy, easy, easy answer. <laughs> so I am super passionate about helping mental health and kids. Mm -hmm. I had depression when I was younger. I mm -hmm. almost committed suicide when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And I was actually on antidepressants when I tried it. And I hate seeing how the state of our children are. The age of suicide is what, I think it's 10 to 18, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. How devastating is that? That mm -hmm. when you haven't even become an adult, you're thinking to end your life. I mean, I don't think there's anything more devastating than that. And what I desire with my full heart is to help that, to be, I, I truly believe that we need this type of stuff, meaning life coaching, life skills in schools. We need to teach kids like what mindset is, how to change your story. You know, like I think it is the most needed thing more than anything. And it is my desire to be a part of that. And mm -hmm. if I could wave a wand, it would be to, for kids to have the resources that they will engage in, right? To make it a fun way, whatever it may be, to, uh, to give them the courage, the resilience they need to get just to adulthood. <laughs> you know, if we, if we were taught all these things when we were younger, imagine where we would be now. So it starts from our, our childhood starts yeah. from our young adulthood. And so that if I could pull out one thing, that's definitely something I'm super passionate about. Mm -hmm. I would love to do much more than that. But mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, that's amazing. Um, You know, Eric, I'm very, very big on giving to the listener always some kind of actionable uh, item. And I know we've, you've already mentioned quite a few, but uh, if we go back and imagine from this conversation, what's the one actionable item you will share with the listener that they can implement uh, immediately or tomorrow morning? Okay, so I guess I'll kind of reiterate something I've already said. Yes. Take time to be with you take time mm -hmm. to be silent i think being alone is one of the greatest things because we don't get that enough in this busy world i mean i know it's a lot more quiet because of covid uh but that was a gift really truly because i think a lot of people started to reevaluate their lives mm -hmm. so do that now evaluate evaluate your life evaluate your values your principles get to know you Get to know your true authentic self. And I believe being authentic, being vulnerable is your superpower. But how do you get there is you have to strip down all the lies you tell yourself. You have to strip, you have to take apart the story you told yourself. And the only way you could do that is being quiet with yourself and mm -hmm. jotting things down, journaling. I remember when, when I had my little breaking moment Part of it was I really wanted, you know, like I talked about relationship was my struggle and I really wanted to meet the quality men, man that I desired or dreamed of. Mm -hmm. And I did within like two months and I'm with mm -hmm. him and he's incredible. He's everything I wished for. It was everything I jotted down. It was the, the values I wanted in a person. But the, re the reason how I was able to attain that was not only getting clear of what I wanted, but also getting clear, am I being the person that could have that? Yes. So you need to really evaluate yourself and own your shit, <laughs> like <laughs> own your story, own your shit. Whatever, like I said, responsibility will change your life. Take ownership for your life. You need to, you know, uh, I, David Goggins is somebody that's really harsh. And he says, like, <laughs> if you're fat, say you're fat. Tell yourself you're fat. Because you know what? If you tell yourself you're fat, and I, I think this is a little harsh, but I'm trying to give a, a hard example. You need to tell yourself the honest truth and then say to yourself, okay, 
enough is enough. I don't want to be fat. I want to be feeling good in my body. I want to be energized. I want to have vitality. I want to look good. I want to attract the right partner. And the only way you could do that is if you look at your shit and, you know, break it into pieces and then evaluate, okay, what are my values? What are my principles? What are, what is my philosophy for life? And, and I think that's the most powerful thing you could do right now. We all have the ability to do it right now and just take, at least take a day to be with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Go out in nature. Nature is so healing, so peaceful, puts you in a meditative state regardless. So, yeah. Thank you. That's a, that's a, not only a powerful message, but also a, a beautiful piece of advice. So thank you very much. And I also will uh, second that and advise the, the listener to do that if it's so immensely important. Uh, so Erika, I want to uh, thank you very much for this uh fascinating conversation i really enjoyed uh, your your passion and i think your message was coming through from different angles i think it is uh, the same message that uh, comes across to me so it was uh, great to see you go from different angles on the same uh, uh, core message if i can say so i want to wish you all the very best with your mission of uh, empowering others and uh, I'm very blessed to be on a similar mission myself and I'm uh, delighted that uh, you know our paths have uh, crossed and uh, all the very best with uh, everything you do um, any last uh, parting words well, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much, Augie. I, it's been a pleasure. We're on different sides of the world, and it's just so nice we get to connect this way. And I just want to thank you for all you are doing because you are creating a ripple effect in the world. And, and you know, the work we are doing is so, so vital, and the world needs more positivity. And it's not just about positivity. It's more about transformable change. You know, and the only way that could happen is by doing the work on ourselves and and embracing our shit, but also (laughs) taking ownership of our life and creating it the the masterpiece we choose it to be, you know. And so I just thank you for holding this space for me and uh, welcome me on the podcast. And yeah, everybody listen to Passion, Love, Pursuit podcasts. Uh, It's a personal development podcast like yours. And uh, I think a lot of people really appreciate the value that is shared by all the guests. And if you want to learn more about me, ericalippi.com. And I live on social media, mostly Instagram uh, at ericalippi. So yeah, I'd love to connect with all of you. Thank you. Fantastic. Erica, thank you. It's been a real pleasure to to share the space uh, with you today. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. (laughs) Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and rate Personal Development Mastery on Apple Podcasts and also share this episode with someone who you think will benefit from it. If you want to become part of an exclusive community, gain access to unique content, and at the same time support this podcast, then become my patron. The link is in the show notes or you can type bit.ly slash pdmpat. If you want to know more about what I do and how I can help you, join my Facebook group Personal Development Mastery. Again, the link is in the show notes or you can simply type bit.ly slash pdmgroup. And until next time, Stand out, don't fit in.